John Gosling has already enjoyed a spectacular 2015, highlighted by the Derby successes of both Golden Horn and Jack Hobbs. And as September descends on Newmarket, the trainer is looking to finish off a golden autumn with both those colts and indeed his other stable stars. So, John, the dust has long settled on the Judmont. Uh, what, what are your thoughts now with, the, with the, you know, the passing of time on the race itself? There's not much dust to settle. It was a bit wet, actually. <laughs> uh, look, I think as I sort of hinted after the race, if um, I, I wish to take nothing of the filly, I think she was magnificent. I don't think she was shown enough respect by any of the other riders in the field. Uh, you know, obviously, the old Dick Daddy Wiley was a pacemaker, set an even pace. Um, he was raised ten pounds for the effort, so suddenly he's improved ten pounds at seven, which is really interesting. Uh, and look, uh, it's the way things happened. Uh, we all were laying out of our ground and uh, little wrestling matches with horses. These things don't help. But uh, the filly, she was tremendous. She made every use of her five pound allowance and put her head back in front. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's what racing's all about, as we know with American Pharaoh. That's the way it goes. You know, if you run them enough, something will happen. And I always think, if you think of the two great stallions in Europe now, Dubawi, Galileo, they both tasted defeat. Secretariat tasted defeat. I mean, Nijinsky, it's quite a long line, so uh, it's all over, finished, you move on quickly. Yeah. And we're looking towards the Irish champion. And uh, I think everybody's hoping that uh, we get a dry spell. What do you do with him after a race like York, before he goes off to Leperstown? Just normal routine candidates and a normal work, nothing fancy, nothing different. Uh, particularly, he may well work uh, this weekend on the race course. That would be the only thing that would be slightly different, but it's not too far to go. It's, it's just the other side of town. Uh, that would be the only thing that might be more unusual, just doing that, uh, rather than just working here on the gallops and exercising here. But uh, you don't go trying to reinvent the wheel. He was quite lit up going to post as well as in the race at York, wasn't he? Was, is that a concern for you at all? Not really. I think the problem was that, uh, you know, he's been on the go a long time and he was prepared for the King George. Uh, I think he either won it well, if, uh, but an inch and a half of rain didn't help in the 18 hours before the race. And to that extent, uh, you know, when you come up to a race and you don't run, you come down again, it can be a little frustrating for a horse. Like, you know, if you tell... Tell any great athlete right here, the big games in Beijing, when you get there, say, no, you can't run. You know, that's not mentally, that, it's not the easiest thing. So I think to that extent, he's a little fresh, ready to go, and probably would have been better just letting him go. <laughs> but, uh, and he's, you know, he's an exuberant horse, which I, is not as part of his character. So to that extent, uh, I think it probably accounts for him being a little bit that way, but, uh, at the end of the day, uh, if, if the pace was just even which it was, you'd probably be better closer to it, that's all. And he's still lightly raced. I mean, do you think there's any more improvement to come from him? I think with any three-year-old, uh, there should be improvements throughout the year. And, and we, how many horses do we see improve remarkably from three to four? Mm. And if you ask them when they're at their peak, they're at their peak at five. You know, a flat race horse is at its peak at five, fully matured, fully grown, if they're sound and everything, you know, and really understand racing and they're, they're real racing machines then so to that extent yes there should be improvement It'd be Do wonderful you, if you did train training at four well it? i was just going to ask <laughs> i thought you i could you, see that yeah, coming you could see it coming a mile off. <laughs> yeah. i mean you understand mr oppenheimer wants to make the most of him at a stud i guess but it would be lovely to see him as a four-year-old wouldn't it i think you and i must talk to him <laughs> <laughs> i think it would i think he's you know he's, he's a lovely horse and he's still a long way he's still not the matured pro horse at the end of his no way at this stage He's been on the go since uh, mid-January, so for these three-year-olds, when you go all the way through and you don't have a summer break, which he hasn't really had now because he was prepared for the King George, so, you know, the, the year can, can stretch him out a little bit, but he seems bright and happy at the moment. And of all the good horses you've had here over the years and before when you trained elsewhere, I mean, how does he compare? What, what, is, he, is he at the top of the list? No, oh, he's fabulous. You don't go winning Dante's derbies and eclipses for, for nothing, you know? Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a fabulous horse. Now, he's a charming horse to be around. He's, you know, he's a character. He's he's a boy and quite a lad, you know. But uh, he gets on with the job. He's he's a pleasure to be around. Uh, you're lucky when you have 
You're lucky when ones like that come along. Mm. It's been a heck of a year for you. I mean, not just winning the, the Epsom Derby with him, Irish Derby with Jack Hobbs and the French Oaks with Star of Seville. And a lot was made earlier in the season, John, about Jack Hobbs being the work in progress. Uh, do you feel as though he's closing the gap a bit on Golden Hall now as he gets more mature? Well, obviously, he raced very late in the year. He didn't have much time off. He was just trotting during January and he was back cantering again February the 10th or something. So he really only had a little bit of downtime in the winter. I think it's an important time for two-year-old turning three to have that. You know, it's, it's, it's like, in a sense like hibernation. In that they put, but a lot of what they eat goes into the energy of growing and developing. So he didn't have a lot of time off. He had a great spring. Uh, he ran up against Golden Horn, obviously, in both the Dante and the Derby. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to win his own. And he then has had, had a nice freshening period through the summer. I mean, I said, stop them. We're not going to run off to anything else. So he's coming back. And you saw him this morning. He's quite, quite full of himself. Mm. Rob, Rob, Rab Havlin was on him. Yeah, he does. And he's a big strapping horse. And he's by a side that I trained that got better with age, you know. And I think to that extent, he, he's a horse all being well. I very much look forward to, to racing next year. Can you see him closing the gap on Golden Horn if they both line up at Longshot? I think Golden Horn has just more natural speed. Yeah. For, for a horse who stays a mile and a half, he does have phenomenal speed. I saw James Underwood indicating that he thought he could come back and run in the QE2 over a mile. He's probably right, he could. Frankie and I get it wrong again, we might have to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, the, the other horse is a, is a quicker horse, there's no doubt about it. you only got to watch the stride pattern and the way he can accelerate, whereas the other boy really is can pick up but slightly more of a length, lengthening style. Yeah, yeah. He does stay around next year though. That's, that's, that's that is the plan, yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah. And I, it was always the plan with him. It was never never otherwise, no. He can be some horse next year. Yeah, he should be and uh, we'll see. His father got better with the HSA and he's, you know, he doesn't have the sort of we've got to go to stud now pedigree. So uh, hopefully we can enjoy him as a racehorse. Eagle Top, who's been a bit of a near miss this season, I mean, particularly in the King George, wasn't it? It was desperate for you. Yes, he's, he, he ran a superb race. He, he's a better horse on quicker ground. When he won the King Edward VII and beat a certain horse called Adelaide, and he was, beat him comfortably, and that was quick ground. And strangely enough, on his pedigree, you say he wants soft, but actually he just loves to bounce off it. And I just told on him that was very very holding through Swinley Bottom and that was a real test of stamina. He had to stay a mile five that day and uh, look, a fabulous finish for the race and with so many horses defecting because of the ground, at least we, we, we put on a great race, uh, you know, with, with Lucas Chap and ours and it was a phenomenal finish and on the bob and that's, that's good for racing. Yeah, but frustrating nonetheless, I'm sure. It's the second time you've been chinned in the King George, isn't yeah, it? Nathaniel got beaten in the nose yeah, as well, but yeah. he had one at the year before. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm going to have to check the angle of that, that photo finish. <laughs> I think they're getting it wrong. So, yeah. what, what about him? He could go for the champion, he could go for the arc. Yeah. He, he could have been three I thought we'd take him to Newbury and run yeah. him in, in the group three there, uh, which is known as the Dubai Duty Free, but arc trial in brackets. Mm. And I think then we'll discuss everything with, with uh, Lady Bamford and see which way she wants to go, whether it's Paris or whether it's... Uh, Ask it. I think we'll just see how it all unfolds and how the horses are at the time. And do you feel that there's another season in him? Could he stay oh, around for a five? Oh, so. very much so. Yeah, very much so. He's, uh, you know, he, he he didn't he didn't run it too. Yeah. yeah. His first run was at Newbury. He's back off the boards when he won over a mile three in the spring meeting. So you know he's. Funny, a golden horn, and he had one little run at Nottingham at uh, two. So these horses didn't have big two-year-old seasons. So yeah. to that extent, it's logical to go at three and four and. Why not five? Was it a gamble, in a sense, running Shalar at um, Deauville last time, John, or were you happy enough that day with the ground? Well, I walked all the way down. If you know Deauville, you go down, and you get down to six and a half, and there's the river. And the river goes underneath the track. It's just like two lakes. And so my great concern is, uh, is that when the water starts coming up from below, because it can go at that point, it can go absolutely bottomless. But surprisingly because two things they have the all-weather track there now they therefore don't race on the grass a lot of the lesser horses the claimers and things they're running them on the on, on the synthetic on the polytrack and to that extent they save the turf in the old days it could be like a ploughed field by the third week of dover mm. and the other thing is you notice the guys immediately after every race teams of people with their big front things stamping in the ground so i was surprised what good nick the ground was in where it's normally very chopped up mm. And what happened was that it rained heavily in the night and then it dried and then we got two bursts. 
So the ground was what I call wet soft, and I thought we can get through this. Whereas the worst thing with Doval is when it dries out, and it is an old bog there, you know, it's a river bottom, uh, it becomes really sticky and holding, and it's just, oh, I was just struggle to get out of it. And I wouldn't have run him on that type of ground, but it was in the wet ground. Look, he tolerated it. Yeah. It wasn't his favourite, but he got the job done because he got the class. And how's he come out of that race? Very well, very yeah. well. Just, you saw him count this morning, he's in great order. Very happy with him. We're looking at September the 26th, the middle park, which middle has park. always been the plan. Yeah. Would you set him up to seven this year as well? Could he take in the Dewhurst too? We'll see. I think we're inclined at this moment just to stay where we are, but, um, you know, keep our minds open always. I don't think you can ever say, we will do this, we will do that. It's horses. Horses, if you watch and listen, they tell you. He's very exciting though, isn't he? He's got so much natural speed and, yeah. and ability. Great attitude. Yeah, it's never the attitude. It's home. He, he sits in behind his lead horse, goes to sleep and then goes past. But in the races, he comes out the gate and they don't seem to go quite fast enough. So he's wind up you know, but up the front or on the lead, which is never quite our plan. It seems to be much more his idea than ours. So the target, I guess you mentioned before, the long-term target next next summer at Royal Ascot Commonwealth Cup, perfect. perfect. Yes, I mean, I don't, you don't rule out a guineas and you'll be put in a guineas, it will, will enter him obviously come the time. And then we'll just see how he's training, how everything's going. And uh, is that a possibility, is it not? Is he going to be like Avenant uh, who won it everywhere by the last, you know, he, yeah. he, he's, is he going to get the mile? On the damn side, you could argue it both ways. Mm -hmm. Invincible spirit, well, you know. All sorts. All sorts. So, mm -hmm. to that extent, um, so not we don't out. know. It's not ruled out, but I can, I'm going to keep an open mind on it. Yeah. But if you ask me right now, as we stand here, I could see him just as such a quick horse. I see him more as an Oasis Dream type than I do as a, as a, as a, as a Kingman type. What about the season as a whole, John? We're coming up to the twilight now of the season. It's been a, a fantastic run for you. Um, you must be delighted the way it's turned out. Well, we've got a great team here, you know, really fantastic staff and everyone works hard and we're lucky to have some super owners, good owner breeders, incredibly important, you know. Mm. And uh, to that extent, we've, we've, we've had a good run uh, and, and the horses have touched wood, you know, stayed healthy and we all know how essentially important that is you know they, they have on the whole been that way um, it's, and you get your your reverses and your disappointments in the year but that is the nature of, of our game if it was all a foregone conclusion nobody would bother turning up would yeah. they um, but we'll see we as you say we're into the last two months now and it's an important time for the two-year-olds particularly a lot of time I have to get them out September October get a run to them even if you're using November going to Kemptons and Lingfields and Wolverhamptons, getting runs into them. Very important time, trying to educate them for the next season. Because one's already thinking that way, you know. You're always, you're all, I'm already thinking about next spring with a lot of these horses. When to start, when not to start, when to go on, everything. It's, it's, it's important to try and get the balance right. And what sort of vibe are you getting with the juvenile crop this year compared to previous years? I think we've been lucky the last two years with your Kingmans, your Togrudas and, yeah. uh, and the boys who are talking about and well, there's some fabulous older ones like the Fugue. So I don't, I see, you know, I, I, there's some nice horses that I think that are promising, but uh, to expect them to go to that level, it would be pure arrogance. So uh, I, I wait for them to get there. I don't ever start saying, oh, this is a fabulous, this is a, because you can wind up walking around the corner and straight down on a banana skin, you know. Mm -hmm. And I suppose many people look back on this season as seeing as a, a renaissance for Frankie, your old mate, particularly winning the derby for you, uh, given yeah. that he's got this new job with Al Shakab as well, which has elevated him back into the Group 1 winner's circle regularly. Um, it must be satisfying for you to see Frankie doing well again. Well, you know, he's, uh, he's a quite superb jockey, we know that. Uh, he's bred to be a champion jockey out of a, a circus acrobat family. <laughs> Uh, but he's, you know, he's, he's very knowledgeable, very experienced. Uh, he's a huge benefit to have riding for you. Uh, the rides work here in the mornings, and you learn a lot from him. Listen, listen to him, and uh, and he and he'll come up with nine, nine brilliant ideas, and you discount the tenth. <laughs> it's a bit like you know when we're training the same, and, and nine brilliant rides, and we discount the tenth. That's just the way it is. Yeah. But he's, he look, he's an asset to anybody, and. Uh, He's, he's at a stage of his career where physically he's as strong and uh, as ever, and I noticed a, a hunger in his eye mm -hmm. still, you know, he, 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 like everybody, everybody's career isn't, uh, it isn't like that, it can do various, you know, have little peaks and troughs, and, 
but there's no doubt he's enjoying it. That's the other thing. He likes coming in here, seeing the horses ride, and then he, you know, I have to be careful. You have to, you'll be trying to train them soon. You know, we're not having that. <laughs> uh, you know, I say hey, that's my department, not yours. But uh, I think he's uh, he's a pleasure to work with, and always has been.